opportunity to wish Happy Father's Day as much as we have celebrated last week. Yeah. So Happy Father's Day to all fathers. Yeah. So we have earthly father and heavenly father. Yeah. So two fathers we have. Yeah. Earthly father and heavenly father. Okay. So that's it. If you all still remember what was shared last week by Pastor John Chi. Anyone remembers? What Pastor John Chin shared? Anybody? No one. Brother Barnabas, you remember? <laughs> so it was from Luke chapter 15, yeah? It was from Luke chapter 15, right? The prodigal son. Isn't it? That was a message. So I'm going to share something along that line, but with a bit of twist in it, yeah? Okay, come, but just let's just pray first. Okay, come, let's pray. Come. Father God, thank you, God, that you have been good even today. Just surrender the entire service onto your hand, O oh God. Even, O oh Lord, that you do the talking, O oh God. Lord, as what John says, John 3.30 says, O oh Lord, you increase and I decrease, O oh Lord. I'll just decrease, O oh God. But you increase, O oh Lord, to the maximum, O oh God. Let every word that comes out from your son's mouth be like a... Be like a double-edged sword, O oh God. Even sharper than double-edged sword, O oh God. That's going to pierce through soul and spirit. Even pierce joint and marrow. And be a discerner of thought and intent, O oh God. That's what you say, O oh God. Father, even want to surrender the entire meeting onto your hand. And we pray, O oh God, even now. You cause your spirit to touch every heart. And you cause lives to be fully transformed, O oh Lord. So that our lives will be pleasing to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, pray in us. Amen. Amen. So what I'm going to share is called Sonship Forgotten. Yeah, Sonship Forgotten. So this has been shared in our prayer meeting, but just briefly. So there's going to be another part of it as well. Yeah. So, But I'm just going to start with Sonship Forgotten. So this was written many, many years ago. I was really like struggling what to share. Yeah, finally, since today is Father's Day, he said, okay, and it's a sequel to what Pastor John Chin shared last week. I thought this would be a good compliment to what he shared, yeah. So, Sonship Forgotten. Oh, sorry, yeah, I always have a problem with this. Am I doing the right way? No. So I'm going to start with this statement Trajectory What is your trajectory? So we have two trajectories that you can take The first one You can take the trajectory of Sonship Or secondly You can take the trajectory of a Servanthood Yeah? So throughout Bible, it talks about that, yeah? Either you can choose between trajectory of sonship or trajectory of a servanthood. But what trajectory is? Trajectory is very simple, you know? It's very synonymous to the word called pathway. Pathway. What path do you want to take? So the, the, the issue that I'm going to raise today is the path either as a son or the path as a servant. Okay, it's going to basically uncovering what are the uh, plans that God has for you as a son, yeah? As his son, yeah? This is what we're going to look at. Okay, what is your trajectory? As you can, as we all know, uh, time and again, you would have read about the parable of the lost son and has preached extensively. I think this is the one most preached word, Yeah? It's one most preached uh, word, yeah, throughout uh, whatever, when you uh, search for something, you'll definitely come across this. The parable of the lost son. And last week I've heard about it uh, from Pastor James Chin, yeah. So it basically talks about two sons, the elder and the younger son, and how the younger son ha asked his portion of the inheritance from his father. He took it and the father gave it to him, yeah. And he spent it in a very reckless way, yeah? After a while, then he came to his senses and he said, Oh, even my father's servant has better food. 
So he decided to go back, right? So what did the father did? The father received him with an open arm. Yeah? He welcomed him. Not only that, he fa his father prepared him a rope, put a rope on him, put a ring on him. Yeah? So we know that is actually telling us about our father in heaven, how his heart is. Yeah? It's such a forgiving father that we have. Yeah? Our father in heaven. Okay? And the second one, if you look at Matthew 25, 14 to 30, the parable of the talents, this also has been preached extensively, yeah? So, there are three servants, the master or the Lord actually gave each a talent, yeah? The first one given five, the other one given two, and the third one given one. So, though the one who received five came back with another five, right? The second one who received two came back with another two, but the third guy... Look at what he said. I was afraid I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. This is what he said. So this is actually a mindset of a servant that this guy is displaying. Look at this. He says, I was afraid. As a servant, you know, it's very much performance-based. Performance-based. You do well, you get rewarded. You don't do well, you don't get rewarded. But as a son... It's not performance-based, yeah? When you don't do well, you have your father still there waiting for you, huh? He wants to just embrace you. Your father is there waiting for you, even you don't do well. So, sonship is not performance-based, but servanthood is definitely performance-based, yeah? So, when he didn't, uh, he, 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 he decided to heed it, huh? Because he says that he knows that his master is a hard man. That is the reason that he gave, yeah? Now, let us just look at older son versus younger son who had different, two different trajectories. Yeah? The, the older son, basically, I'm going to say that he had that mindset of a servanthood. But this younger son, he had the mindset of a sonship. Okay, let's just see what are the difference between these two trajectories, yeah? Okay, based on the story in Luke. Now, as I said, we have preached so much about the younger son, but nobody shares about the older son. What I'm going to uncover today is what, you know, the, young, the older son, as much as he has his rights, but he has completely forgotten his rights as a, as a son. Yeah, he has completely forgotten. Let's just see the first one. I'm going to say that the older son actually forgotten that he is in possession, yeah? He never even bothered to ask the father anything. But God has been telling us, if you need anything, ask, right? Time and again, throughout the word of God, God has said that. If you need anything, ask me. Open your mouth. Ask. It will be given. Knock, the door will be opened. Seek, you will find it. This is the command that God has given. He wanted us to ask, yeah? But this older son never bothered even to ask. But the younger of them, as what in Luke 15, 12 says, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. This is a good father, yeah? A lot of fathers normally don't give, but it's a good father, yeah? He just decided to de uh, divide, yeah? His portion. And then the older son also, I'm going to say that he failed to ask, yeah, as what 1529 says in Luke, and yet you never gave me a young goat. He said, I'm such an obedient son of yours, but you never give me even a young goat. But the issue here is whether he asked or not. Obviously, he didn't ask, yeah? So we as Christians, we always go, or we always wanted to maintain our status quo, yeah? We don't want to ask anything from God. When God is in the position of wanting to give us, He wants to bless us, yeah? But we normally don't ask. A lot of people are like that, yeah? I knew this young man. He thinks that his problem is so greater than God, yeah? He thinks that his problem is so great than God that even when God come, even God also cannot settle his, his problem. And over the years, what I've seen, I've just seen deterioration in erosion. Deterioration is wealth, uh, his health de uh, deteriorated. Not only that, everything of his being yeah, is deteriorated. Emotion and everything. 
Yeah. So this is actually an act of surrender, and God wants us to surrender. I tell him, you surrender to God, and he'll ask me back, how do I surrender? Yeah. So it's something that all of us have to remember that we have to ask. As much as God knows what we need, He wants us to open our mouth and ask in faith. Yeah. And then thirdly, if you look at that a dormancy mentality that the older son had, he had that mentality of a, of, of a servant, yeah? And see in uh, verse 15, 29, Luke, he says, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. He's so focused on that serving, yeah? He was so focused on that serving to the point that he says that, I'm just a servant, yeah? So that serving over the years, yeah, has actually transformed him into that mindset of a servant. And then the fourth one, if you look at 15, 13 in Luke, he also dwells in negative negativity, yeah? You know, when the younger son came back, the father actually held the feast, right? But the older son says, look at his response. He says, but as soon as this son of yours come, came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you kill the fatted cow for him. So he was very unhappy, right? He was very unhappy. Why? Because he actually squandered whatever that the father gave him. Huh? So he's very unhappy, yeah? Because the younger son actually squandered. So he was very, very unhappy. But his father says, son, this son of mine who was lost, but now am found. Let us rejoice and hold a feast for him, huh? That's why his fa father responded, right? This is our father in heaven waiting for those who are lost. He's just waiting for you to come back, yeah? So let us just remove that mindset of negativity. Because if you dwell in that negativity, it's going to again deteriorate your well-being further, yeah? It's going to bring you down completely. Okay, and then finally, if you look at that older son, he required that recentering. So father needed him to put him into perspective. Okay, look at what the father said. It was right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost, is found. And this is the heart of God, right? This is our heavenly father's heart. This is the heart of Jesus. Yeah? Those who are lost need to be found. Even today, you know, later as you come to the end, you feel like you need to basically reconcile with God, yeah? So come back, come to the front, we'll pray, yeah? This reconciliation is actually very important. Okay, so that said, this is about older son. So obviously the older son had that one trajectory that is servanthood, yeah? Now, let's just look at the younger son. Sonship has always been his trajectory. Sonship has always been trajectory. So, the moment he repented, he repented and he came back to his father. He repented, he came back. Yeah? He re that reminds him that nobody can take away the sonship from him. The sonship is forever to remain. It's just like you and your father. Huh? Nobody can take that away. Friendship can vanish, but sonship stays. Right? Servanthood can disappear but sonship stays. So he said in 1518 Luke, I will arise and go to my father. Yeah, this is what he said. So he remembered, I'm still a son and I got a father. I know if I go back to my father, my father will never ever reject me. So you see how he actually embraced that sonship, the younger son, yeah, he embraced that sonship. And then, the moment he repented and he decided to go back to his father, reward followed. Reward followed. The second one in 1522, it says, bring out the best rope and put it on him. Look at this. It's not just an ordinary rope, but his father brought him the best rope. Okay? And put a ring on his hand. I believe this must be a golden ring. Gold ring, yeah? and sandals on his feet. You can just imagine how his condition was, yeah? He must have been without even a shoe, right? That's why the father decided to give him even a, a, a sandal, yeah? So you see, 
when you start embracing sonship, reward definitely follows. This is so evident in what you can see in 1522. Yeah, it's so evident here. And more importantly, sonship brings reconciliation. Yeah, sonship will bring reconciliation. It improves relationship. It fix up broken relationship. You know, when I was a Hindu, imagine who is the, the person that it was so difficult for me to get along. It was actually my father. I don't talk to him. I don't dare to look at his face because he's such a strict person. The moment both became Christians, he became a Christian in 92, I became a Christian in 93. God just came and reconciled us both. He came and he reconciled. And from a disliked son, I became most loved son of his. Yeah? This is the power of our God. Yeah? Only our God can do this reconciliation. No one else can do. Yeah? Even today, Father's Day, Father, or even sons or daughters, you feel that you have not reconciled with your father or even your mother. Okay? Give them a call. Yeah? Talk to them. And just ask him, forgive me for whatever that I've done. You're not going to lose everything. But God's going to honor you for this step that you're going to take. Yeah? God's going to honor you. I just want to encourage you to do that. Yeah? So I don't have a father to this thing, yeah? to call or let, let, uh, speak. So in case we are not in a good relationship, take this opportunity, call them and just say, Father, I love you. You know that one word if you say, Father, I love you. That's enough to change the entire game. That's going to be a game changer for you too. Yeah? And I've seen that in my life. Yeah? How when God stepped in into my father's life and my life, such transformation. I see it from dislikes, disliked son became the loved son of his. Yeah? Okay. So the fourth point, 1520 says, restoration. You know, sonship can bring restoration. As much as we said about reconciliation, he also restored relationship, yeah? Okay, yeah? Restoration. Whatever that he had lost, completely restore, restored through that sonship that the younger son had, yeah? At, in 1520 Luke, it says, bring out the best rope and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. This actually speaks about restoring power of Jesus. When you have Jesus... When Jesus stepped into that scene, you know, he comes to restore whatever the enemy has robbed from you. Whatever that is stolen from you, okay? God will restore. Because you are entering into that relationship called sonship and fatherhood with Jesus. The very moment you say, yes, Jesus, I'm going to accept you as my Lord and Savior, you are actually entering into that relationship called sonship and fatherhood. Yeah, and he longs for that. Jesus longs for that. Yeah? And finally, rejoicing. Imagine, repentance brings to rejoicing. Yeah? The entire family rejoiced. In 1523-24, Luke says, And bring the fettered calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and he's alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. So this is the power of repentance. Look at this. Even if some of us requires repentance, yeah? We need to come into the presence of a God and just repent, yeah? Look at the benefits of repenting, yeah? You are not only reminded that you are a son, but it brings reward, reconciliation, restores whatever that you have lost in the past. And more importantly, it's a moment of rejoicing, yeah? The heaven rejoices when one person repents, right? King David repented. Yeah, the moment he repented, you know, it was really like mind-blowing in the sense that he wrote that Psalm 51, huh? King David. And I love that. You can go and time and again read that Psalm and, you know, reconcile again with, the, with God the Father. Yeah. Now, let's just compare sonship 
with servanthood. So sonship is something that's permanent. Nobody takes that from you. Nobody can take that away. Yeah? All of us will agree to that. Sonship is permanent. But servanthood is actually contractual or temporary. It's just for a time period. So the moment you finish your term, you can just leave. Yeah? But look at this va valuable dimension of sonship. It's actually permanent. Can never be taken, can never be erased. That's the power of sonship. Secondly, sonship brings inheritance. Not only material, but spiritual. Yeah? But as a servant, you don't have any inheritance. Nobody will leave inheritance to a servant. If you're a domestic helper, do you leave any inheritance to your servant? You don't. We don't do that because it's waged. At the end of the day, you get waged. You get your salary. That's it. Huh? Talking about this inheritance, my youngest daughter had a bit of spiritual attack in a, in a hostel. But I just told her this. You know, you as a daughter of God, just take authority. I just taught her how to take authority. And that day onwards, I said, every day you pray. I say, Jesus, cover me with your blood because I'm your daughter. That simple prayer. After that, no more. Huh? No more oppressive spirit coming. And she had a very good uh, sleep, yeah, night time. And I've been asking her, do you have any other issues? She said, no more already. Just thing just left. That's the power of God. Lah. I think we as a parents, you know, we need to teach our children about authority and taking authority. How important is that as a Christian? Yeah? We need to teach our children. Okay, so the third one, sonship is also very unconditional. There's no condition, there's no string attached when you are a son. Yeah? But servanthood is actually conditional. You got even your timing, this time to time, you must work. Imagine if you're a domestic helper, you say 5 a.m. until 12 midnight. Yeah? So very conditional. But as a son, there's no condition attached. Yeah? And sonship also not based on performance. But servanthood is definitely based on performance. This is so powerful, yeah? No toiling. When you're a son, you don't have to even toil. Yeah? You know, when the fishermen ca came back, and they met Jesus. Jesus said, uh, the, the fishermen say, uh, the, uh, Jesus told them that throw the net on the other side. Yeah? But they say, Lord, we have been toiling all night. But at your word, we'll just do it. Yeah? Just because Jesus said. And through enough, the catch that they had is so much. Okay? As a son, you don't have to toil. But as a servant, it's literal toiling. Huh? You have to really, really work hard. But you may not be rewarded. Yeah? And sonship also, you will have the authority. But as a servant, there's no authority to it. Yeah? No authority. And sonship brings that sense of belonging. You know, you say that whatever that my father has, it belongs to me. But as a servant, you can't claim anything. Yeah? Isn't it? This is what the promise that Jesus has given to us, yeah? Whatever that he has, okay? We own it as well, yeah? We have the right to own it, yeah? Okay? Now, I'm going to go a bit deeper. There are... Servanthood is always comes with that, uh, what we call as the notion of Lacking, lack, servanthood. Yeah? But the notion of sonship, it comes with sufficiency and overflowing. Sufficient and overflow. Okay, I repeat again. Huh? The servanthood comes with the notion of lacking. Yeah? You lack as a servant. But as a son, it's going to be sufficient. But more importantly, it's overflowing. Yeah? Second Kings, chapter 4. The woman who came and met Elisha, she's a, she's a widow. She said, 
the creditors are after my, me and my children. One thing that Elijah asked her, Elisha asked her, Elisha said, what do you have in your house? I just don't have anything. I just got a bottle of oil. Huh? That's what she said. What happened? She said, bring me the oil. The moment she started giving away something that's so dear to her, miracle happened, right? What happened? It was an overflow of oil, right? This is the picture that God has given for you and me. You know, when we start making our relationship right with God, it's not only sufficient, but it's going to be overflowing. It's overflowing. I can, I can testify on that, what happened in my life. Definitely Dr. Kwan will testify on that. It's not only sufficiency, but it's overflowing. So the power of embracing sonship is not only sufficiency, but it's overflowing. This is what I'm going to show now, yeah? How, you know, you can call it as an overflow. So, so we saw a while ago, repentance leads to rem reminder. Let's just look at John 15, 15. Jesus said this, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all the things that I heard from my father I've made known to you. Do you see an elevation here from servant to friends? As a servant, you don't share many things to your servant. You give instruction. As you elevate further, as what Jesus says, I no longer call you servants, but I'm going to call you friends. With friends, you, say, you share normally intimate matters, right? Intimate things, who's your, probably like, you know, your girlfriend or boyfriend for the younger ones, yeah? <laughs> you say, share probably intimate things. But let's go into John chapter 1, 12, 13. It says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. What does that tell you? You are the son of God. You are the daughter of God, Most High. And we have the right to embrace that notion called sonship. Yeah? We can embrace that sonship. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See how powerful is this notion called sonship? Because we are all born of God. It's a rebirth for all of us here. Yeah? Rebirth. Reborn. Yeah? Born of God. So that is the power of sonship that you can embrace. But as a son, you know, you saw a while ago, servant, very instructional. You don't share many things. You just give instruction. As a friend, probably you share something a bit intimate. But as, son, as a son, you have the power to inherit. You have the power to inherit. Do you see that elevation? You know, instruction, servant, friends, probably you share intimate things. But as a son... You inherit a lot of things from God, right? And that's the promise that God has given. We inherit. We are the heir and co-heir in Christ Jesus, right? That's number one. Reward. Let us just see. Matthew 25, he says, we know this, yeah? For the one he gave five talent and two talent and they gave back, Jesus said this. The master said this, yeah? Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over, over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And he continues further, Matthew 25, 29 to 30. For to everyone who has more, more will be given. Yeah? And he will have abundance, but from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away. And of course, this is the punch uh, verse in, in, in Matthew 6.33, yeah? Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. It tells you to embrace sonship, actually. Go back to the root, which is actually sonship, yeah? Seek first the kingdom of God. What does that mean, kingdom of God? Jesus is our king. Jesus is our God. Jesus is our father. And we are His children. Embrace the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added. It's just an addition, yeah, adding. 
You're going to see miracle after miracle, breakthrough after breakthrough coming into your life when you start embracing sonship. Reward, yeah? Okay. The third one, reconciliation. Romans 5.10 says, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Yeah? When Jesus gave his life on the cross, all of us were reconciled to him, yeah? That's the best thing that can happen in anyone's life. Yeah? And 2 Corinthians 5, 18-21, it says, Not only Jesus reconciled us to him, but he has given us that ministry of reconciliation. We are all ambassadors of Christ. Yeah? The call is not just reconciling you and me with God. Yeah? But we have to bring that ministry of reconciliation to the people out there. People who have never heard about God, you know, they have never known who Jesus is. You know, are we just sitting at our comfort zone and, you know, not bringing that, that message of hope to the perishing world? And this is the call that God has given. When He gave, He gave this ministry of reconciliation, He says, Go. As what in Matthew 9, 37, 38 says, Laborers are few, harvest is plenty. I pray that the Lord of harvest will send the workers to the field. So that we can bring that ministry of reconciliation, yeah, that came through sonship that all of us uh, received and bring it to the world out there. So as a son... You received that ministry of reconciliation. Are you going to keep that ministry to you or bring it out? This is the call that God has given us. Yeah? And restoration. Joel 2.25 says, I'll restore you the years that swarming locusts has eaten. As a son, this is what God says. He'll bring restoration. So the condition is you need to enter into that relationship with God. Otherwise, it's not possible. Yeah? We have to enter into that relationship with God. And even as what the older son, as much as he is son, he has forgotten his sonship, yeah? He has forgotten. But the younger son, is always reminded that he is son. That's why I entitled this as sonship forgotten, yeah? John 10.10, 10, I don't want to focus on that first part, huh? Okay, I'll just focus on the second part. Jesus said, I've come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. It's not sufficiency that God is talking about. Huh? It's talking about abundance. Overflow. When he restores, it's overflowing. It's not just sufficient. Yeah? Okay? And Romans 8.32 says, He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not... With him also freely give us all things. Freely give. As a son, you receive that freely. When Jesus paid the price on the cross for you and me, it was free. He paid everything. All your debt has been paid. You know? So, that's why when you come before Jesus, when you start confessing and accepting Him as Lord and Savior, you're just coming as like a new babe. Clean slate. Whatever that you've done in the past, completely wiped out. Clean slate. Babe. Baby. Yeah? All of us are like that. Yeah? And finally, it's a moment of rejoicing. Yeah? But it's not just rejoicing. Yeah? It's more than that. When you are reconciled with God the Father, when you embrace that sonship, it's not just rejoicing, it's actually more than that. Let's see, yeah? it says Habakkuk 3, 17 to 18. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the wines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut from off the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Rejoicing. Even if you lack anything, you still rejoice when you embrace sonship. Yeah? You'll still, when you embrace sonship, you still rejoice. Romans 15, 13. I intentionally picked up 
the Passion Translation, yeah? Because normally I use NKJV, but here I picked up the Passion Translation. Now may God, the fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in me. It's not just ordinary joy, yeah? uncontainable joy, overflowing joy and peace. And the peace that God gives is not an ordinary peace, yeah? a shalom peace. You can never get that peace. It's a shalom peace. Yeah? I don't know if you have actually experienced that or not. You know, when I was struggling where to go and further my studies in 1996, I said, Lord, I really want to know where you want to send me. Not until I boarded the plane, I just felt the peace of God. And I just knew this is the place that he wanted me to go. In the plane, huh, I felt that peace heading to Sydney. Unusual peace, which I've never felt after that, yeah? One and only time that I had that, that, that experience, that peace. Such a peace that you know that God has taken care of everything. That sort of peace. You know, the worry is gone, the fear is gone at that time, in the plane, huh? and it was taking off. Hebrews 12, 2 says, Let's look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him. What kind of God is this? It's the joy that was set before him. He's going to the cross. As much as we read in, uh, in uh, Isaiah, right? Uh, Isaiah 53. Correct, right? Isaiah 53. Um, he was nailed. He was crucified for all our transgression. It's in Isaiah, yeah? But what joy that he had to go to the cross. And what kind of God is he? He says that, he says here in Hebrews 12, 2, he says, the joy that was sad before him. I don't think it's just an ordinary joy. It must be joy overflowing, uncontainable joy. Because when you are reconciled with him, you're going to come back and rule with him, right? And he returns. That sort of joy, yeah? Let's look into this. Transgression brings testimony. The younger son transgressed. David transgressed. Yeah, it brought a powerful testimony. Yeah, and the younger son repented. King David repented, and that brought massive restoration. Okay, that's the first point. Second one, servanthood. When you embrace servanthood, you're always in that situation of lacking and insufficiency. But when you embrace sonship is sufficient not only that it overflows yeah we have seen i've given you some uh, uh bible verses a while ago okay now what we do next it's transforming your story my story and our story not history yeah his story the king's story why god give you Testimonies, not to be kept, not be hidden. Go out and share. You know, Jesus gave us this in Luke uh, chapter 4. He said, go and preach, go and heal, and go and deliver the oppressed. And this is what all of us have to do. Even you say that, I can't preach. Just share your testimony. What God has done in your life. Recently, uh, Sister Li Ling introduced me to a plumber. Didn't say anything, didn't speak, but I just listened to his powerful testimony, how he was a drug addict, and came to the saving knowledge of Christ, and how God transformed him. Not only did God transform him, God gave him a wife, and restored whatever the locust has eaten. Yeah? And he has three children now. That's the power of our God. That's the restoring power of our God. Yeah? If only we can embrace 
this notion called sonship. Yeah? You're going to see the powerful restoration that God's going to bring in your life and my life. That said, all this can be found in only one place at the cross of Jesus. No other place. We have to go back to the cross of Jesus. That's what Jesus said here. No greater love. John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. This is the ultimate thing that Jesus did for you and me. He gave his life for you and me on the cross. We are all undeserving. We are all sinners. Yeah? God coming in the form of born servant, in the likeness of man, and going to the cross and giving his life for you and me. So that you and me can embrace the sonship, yeah? And today we have such a precious, powerful gift as son and daughters of God Most High. Yeah? I hope this blessed you today. Yeah? So, even, probably we can ask uh, Denise to just uh, lead in a song. The second last song, Denise. Is that okay? Yeah. Then, if you need a, any ministry, you can come forward. If we like, you have not really activated the gift of sonship, okay? Or you're completely forgotten that you are a son. Or even you, you are living in a lack. Come to the front. I'm here. Dr. Kwan is here. Brother Joshua is here. We all can pray for you. Yeah? Come to the front. As uh, Denise leads us into the song, you can come forward. Yeah? Come. But uh, before that, uh, let me just close in a prayer. Father God, even today, we just want to be thankful for what you did on the cross for all of us, O oh Lord. We just want to surrender our entire being to you, O oh God, and acknowledge, O oh God, that you are our Father, even today, Lord. We just want to embrace the right that you have given to each and every one of us, the son and daughters of God Most High, Lord. You realign, O oh God, our mindset, O oh God, so that, O oh Lord, we'll embrace this trajectory called sonship, son of Jesus and daughter of Jesus, O oh Lord. In the almighty name of Jesus, we pray and ask. Amen. Amen. Sing some goodness of God. If you need any...